Happy Monday, everyone. This is Martha with Nature Niche. I just want to start by saying thank you very much to everyone who watched our tribute to Willow last week. Um, just your, your notes and your thoughts and prayers um, really were very heartfelt. Thank you. Um, we were humbled by the response and we were happy to share her with you. It's helping us heal. So thank you for that and in honor of her, this week I'm going to talk to you about Eastern Screech Owls and their nest boxes. One of our last wildlife encounters together, I was letting Willow out late at night, about 10 o'clock at night, and we stepped out on the back stoop and um, I looked and right on the corner of our backyard fence, there was a reddish uh, Eastern Screech Owl perched. and so. I didn't know that we had them, although we have suitable habitat. It was my first sighting and uh, I'm going to put up um, an Eastern Screech Owl nest box uh, in Willow's honor. So uh, a little bit more about Eastern Screech Owls. They're an adorable pint-sized little owl and they're very common east of the Rocky Mountains in all sorts of woodlands, uh, both evergreen and deciduous. They have the broadest ecological niche of all the North American owls, and they especially like wooded territories uh, near water. But you can find them in the suburbs, um, in urban uh, city parks, uh, agricultural lands, anywhere where there is sufficient tree cover. They're a very cosmopolitan owl, they're not too picky, and as long as there's tree cover available, they'll uh, readily colonize, they'll use backyard nest boxes, and they'll even um, come back to newly reforested areas with smaller trees if uh, nest boxes are provided for them um, instead of uh, the natural cavities that would form in more mature trees. So a little bit about their identification. They are a short, uh, stocky little owl. They have a pretty large head relative uh, to their body size and almost no neck. They have rounded wings with a wingspan that reaches only 19 to 24 inches. And overall, they're about the size of an American Robin or a European Starling, a little bit bigger than that. Uh, and much bulkier. Um, they're about six to 10 inches long with the uh, males being smaller than the females and uh, they have short squared off tails, uh, pointed ear tufts that give them a very distinctive uh, silhouette. And they can either be um, gray overall or a red brown color um, known as the rufous morph and uh, the rufous morphs are more common in the east and overall make up about a third of the um, individuals in our eastern screech owl populations. They can also be an intermediate uh, brown color. I'm pretty sure the one Willow and I saw was a rufous morph. And um, they their feathers have a very complex pattern. So you can see here, um, they have a pattern of streaking and spots that really gives them excellent camouflage against the tree bark. And they have um, light yellow eyes and a pale bill. As far as uh, behavior goes, this is a non-migratory species. So it's a year round resident for us across the Eastern United States, including Michigan's Lower Peninsula. Um, they are nocturnal and more often heard than seen. They're hard to find uh, during the day because with their eyes closed and their feathers pressed up against the um, front of their roosting cavity, they just blend in really well. Um, so you may see them hunting at dawn and dusk and very rarely um, in the daylight. They are sit and wait predators and they watch for uh, prey to pass below them perched um, up on different structures or in a tree about six to 10 feet above the ground and they'll drop down, they'll pounce on their prey. They can occasionally snag insects or bats on the wing 
and they can use their talons to snatch up fish and tadpoles in shallow water. Um, when they're flying in between their perches, they have a very characteristic U-shaped flight where they, they drop down, they kind of fly straight, and then they rise back up to their um, next perch. And uh, the males defend small territories with multiple cavities available for nesting. And uh, screech owls form monogamous bonds for life although a single male may mate with uh, two females and the second female sometimes evicts the first female um, at, at the beginning of the nesting cycle and will incubate both clutches of eggs. Um, as far as nesting goes, they uh, naturally would use tree cavities that are created by other animals. They do not excavate their own, uh, but they'll readily take to nest boxes as well, which makes them um, a fun uh, backyard bird to, to try to attract. They have a single brood uh, per year laying two to seven eggs, um, although they will re-nest if that first clutch fails. And the breeding season is mid-February uh, through March, uh, sometimes later, and the nesting period ranges from mid-February through mid to late July with mid-March to early June really being the prime um, nesting time across most of its range. So we have a warm couple of days here in early March. I'm going to put my box up. Um, I'm a little behind, but that's okay. I'll put it up and see what happens. Maybe it'll be an alternate roost um, if there's a pair in the area um, and their first attempt fails. Um, who knows? Uh, screech owl boxes are also sized so that uh, kestrels and um, flickers will also use them. So I'm happy to put it up and see what happens. Uh, if you were on the ball, you got yours up late fall, early, early winter, um, and then they can check it out all winter. Um, the Males uh, feed the female during the approximately 30 day incubation period, and it takes about 28 days before the owlets fledge. Um, the females uh, tear up the prey that's brought in uh, into small pieces for the nestlings. And um, there's something called siblicide that sometimes happens. The eggs that are laid earlier, you have larger young, and sometimes they um, kill the smaller, um, their smaller siblings. That's something that's fairly common um, in raptor species. During fledgling, um, the owlets exhibit another behavior known as branching where they will crawl out onto limbs or sometimes they even hop down to the ground before they can fly and then they have to you know claw their way back up you know flapping their wings and make their way back up to safety into um, the nest cavity so uh, it's helpful to have um, trees with cavities with you know branches nearby or to pick a tree um, with plenty of branches to help support that branching behavior. Both adults will feed fledglings for eight to 10 weeks. So there's a fair bit of parental care involved um, and they'll shelter together in communal roost trees while uh, the fledglings gain their flight and hunting skills. Uh, as far as vocalizations go, both of the males and females sing. And the most common sounds you'll hear at night are an even pitched trill, which is also known as the bounce or tremolo song that lasts for three seconds, three to six seconds. I'll try playing that for you. And that song um, is used by pairs and families to stay in contact. They also have a shrill uh, descending pitch whinny call that lasts for a half to two seconds long. And this is used to defend territories. I'll play that. I'm using the uh, All About Birds website for the sounds.
so you can tell why that's called the Winnie Call. Um, they also do soft hoots, um, loud, sharp barking calls when they're alarmed. Um, per their name, they screech when defending their nests and their fledglings. And if they're found and mobbed by smaller songbirds trying to annoy them and get them out of their um, territory, uh, they'll give a four note chuckle or rattle uh, call of annoyance or will clack their bills. As far as prey goes, they have the most varied diet of any of our North American owl species. They'll eat just about any small animal, so songbirds, like flycatchers and swallows, thrushes, waxwings, finches, jays, grouse, doves, shorebirds, and woodpeckers. Mammals like rats, mice, squirrels, moles, uh, rabbits, and bats. But they'll also eat earthworms, insects, crayfish, tadpoles, frogs, and other amphibians, and reptiles like lizards and snakes. And they'll cache extra food if it's plentiful um, in different tree crap cavities for up to four days. Their predators uh, for the adults and the fledglings are other large owls, hawks, um, and sometimes even other eastern screech owls. They can be cannibalistic. The eggs and nestlings are preyed upon by black rat snakes, opossums, raccoons, and ringtails. And as far as conservation goes, this one um, isn't declining as steeply as many of our other bird species because it's a generalist. Um, it's not so fussy about its nesting, its habitat, its food. Um, so it's a good survivor in the face of um, human caused deforestation and habitat loss, loss of natural cavities because it will use nest boxes. Um, but uh, we can do things to help them like putting up uh, nest boxes. So I wanted to talk briefly about nest box um, placement. You want to put your nest box in a live tree um, or you can put it, if you know um, predators are of particular concern, you can mount it on a pole or post and add a predator guard and make sure that that is spaced about 10 feet away from any launching point so those predators can't jump directly to the nest box. You want to place your nest box uh, 10 to 30 feet up into uh, the tree and place them if you're putting multiple up uh, at least 100 feet apart. And any direction is fine, you, um, but out of the prevailing wind, east is always a good direction because it gets uh, early morning sun and warms up first. Um, Trees at the edge um, of the woodland are good and you want them to be at least as wide as the nest box itself. And having a limb above and branches nearby, um, the nest box is great for those owlets to come out and do that branching behavior. And you just wanna make sure that those branches don't obstruct the entry to the nest box. You want um, the parents to be able to get in. As far as dimensions go, the entry hole should be approximately three inches um, in diameter. Um, some styles like this one have about three inches by four inches across and roughly um, 14 inches high, 10 to 12 inches wide and uh, about 10 inches deep. And um, placing once you have it installed, two to three inches of wood shavings or dry leaves in the bottom is helpful. Uh, the owls don't add any material. They just lay their eggs on whatever happens to be at the bottom of the cavity. And um, placing a second box out is a good idea in case they fail. Um, screech owls often use an alternative or completely different um, nest site for their second attempt and you don't want to disturb um, the females early in the nesting period. So if you find a nest or see activity, wait at least two weeks if you're going to monitor. You don't want to flush her off and have her stop incubation. Um, so I hope that uh, helps you think about how you can attract um, and place an Eastern Screech Owl nest box in your own backyard. Thanks and have a good week.